If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, June 24th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. On Friday, we brought you part one of my interview with Paralympic swimming champion Jessica Long. On that show, we talked about her preparation for the IPC World Championships, which takes place in August in Montreal. In part two, we talk about the events that led to her finding her Russian birth parents. Well, all of that has got to be really exciting, winning eight Paralympic medals, being on being part of a major international Coca-Cola ad, but uh, and it would be the highlight of anybody's year, but I would imagine all of this um, surrounding the, the location of your Russian birth parents has to be the top moment of 2012 for you. Definitely, definitely up there, definitely. <laughs> um, that was just, it was a little overwhelming um, in London, because that's where I first heard about my family, um, and it wasn't it wasn't, it was very done, it wasn't done very professionally. You know, I was, there were times I was walking in the Paralympic Village and these people would come up and hand me notes that said, you know, we found your biological family and we want you to come back on this TV show in Moscow after the games. And, and at this point, I didn't really know what to believe, you know, because it was something that is, is near to my heart. You know, I, I would love, before London, I, my plan was to go and find my family. So while I'm competing, I'm like, like is, this, is this just a joke? Like, is this... You know, are they trying to get, like, mess with my head? Because this is emotional. This is hard. Um, and we kind of just, you know, kept the media tucked away while I competed. And, and if anything, I think it helps me, um, you know, swim as well as I did because I, I used any frustration that I had towards swimming. And it wasn't up, I wasn't upset that they found my family and I was overjoyed. It was the way that it came about. You know, I just, I wish it had been after London. Um, it would have been a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, it definitely um, would have been. But it was really nice to know my family have all been so supportive. And when I came home after London the next morning, you know, um, from flying all day, I, I was able to get online and see my family on these talk shows over in Russia. And, you know, I got to see them and, you know, I look like them. And, and it's it's so cool. And it's really it's really cool to know, cool knowing that my, um, my biological mom and my biological father they ended up getting married, um, and they ended up having a daughter who's 19 and a set of twins. So it's cool knowing that, you know, I still have this whole family, you know, and, and then my full sister, you know, the, the twins, I'm not even sure their names. Um, but it's, it's been really cool, and if anything, um, I, I'm just, I'm so excited to meet them. I talked to my sister on Facebook, which is, it's, it's fun getting to translate everything that she writes me and um you know just she puts up pictures she tries to put up new pictures you know once a week so it's really cool and i know you had said you wanted to be able to go to russia to meet your parents you haven't met them yet i have not met them um it's just been a little crazy trying to figure out time for all that and you know tying it in with a really big documentary so i'm really excited for that but we've been working on that contract and um you know, just learning um, other organizations that I would, you know, I'm hopefully going to team up with. So it's going to be this kind of big thing, and we didn't want it to be too rushed um, going to Russia. And you know, there had been a couple plans of going in June and then September, um, but with everything with getting visas and everything, it's just been a little hard um, getting it all figured out. So we're right now hopefully aiming maybe around Sochi or right after Sochi or next summer. Um, next summer we won't have World Championships. Um, so that's kind of the update on that, um, and, and I'm still, I'm just, just as excited as I was, you know, when I found out, um, when I was home after London, and, you know, I just, I can't wait, and just knowing that we're going to capture it all on film is, is going to be really cool. Yeah, that is very exciting. Before we move on, I want to kind of get viewers up to speed here. You were born Tatiana Krolova in Russia uh, 21 years ago to I guess more 21 half years ago <laughs> and then your parents were advised to leave you at the hospital because you were born without the fibula bone in your legs and there was a concern that they might not be able to financially support a, a child who was have who had this uh, disability 
and um, then you were adopted shortly after your first birthday to American parent to American couple and um, that's where you grew up in Baltimore and now here you are at 21 years old you know with the possibility of being reunited with them just I mean think about that I mean just how we know it's cool to think about but I mean just did you ever think in, in any point in your life that you would be reunited with them no you know when I was little I always I went through a fa like a, a phase where when I was really little I wanted to meet my mom and it never occurred to me that there was another a whole family that came along with her or even my dad you know I always just thought about my mom meeting my birth mom and then when I was you know in my teens early teens I didn't really care too much you know I just I was happy with my family. I love my family back home in Baltimore, and, and I just was okay with it. And then I started getting curious again and, you know, wanting to know, you know, what she looked like, and just I wanted to know her. I wanted to meet her. And, um, and that's when I had done an interview for Russia One about six months out of London, and they went and then found my family. And, and it's still, even to this day, it sometimes doesn't seem real to me. And, and it's not it's not all, you know, it's, it comes al along with a lot of emotions. You know, not all good emotions. Some of it's still, you know, I'm working through it. And I, I still get a little, a little hesitant sometimes. And then other days, I'm so excited. And it's just a lot to work through. Um, but for the most part, I'm just so excited to meet them. And, and, and it's a happy situation. You know, it never it never occurred to me that my mom may not even have been alive still. You know, and, and knowing that she is alive and, and she married my father and there's three siblings that, you know, it's just, I couldn't imagine any any better. And, and I'm really, really thrilled to go. Did your age have anything to do with it? The fact that you're now 21, did that give you any perspective of now I think I'm of the age where I think I'm okay, I, I can accept meeting her, meeting your your, fa your family now? Yeah, definitely. I definitely, you know, with moving out here to the OTC three years ago, I've definitely grown up um, and become an adult. Um, but I think if I had heard this information, even, even in Beijing when I was 16, I don't, I'm not even sure how I would handle it. You know, I, I just, I don't even know if I could handle it because it's a lot, a lot finding out that you have this whole other family in another country that you've never met, you know? And, and it's, at the same time, it's, it's really cool too, because, you know, I, I was talking to my younger sister, my, um, my adoptive sister, who is my sister, but she said something to me that I'll not, you know, I'll never forget. She's like, Jess, you have two families who love you. And I think that's really special and really great. And, and that's what I'm going to take with me when I go to Russia, is knowing that, you know, this family already loves me. And, and they gave me up because they couldn't care for me, and they did what was best. And, and I'm not angry, and I don't hold any grudges. I know that what they did was what they had to do at that time. And I, and I couldn't imagine not being adopted with my family in Baltimore. Um, so it's just it's a lot of emotion, and right, I'm just I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, just think of all the things that this this opportunity has given you. Like I said, all those Paralympic medals and all the accomplishments you've you've achieved in your life. Yeah, and and I hope they get to know me as you know Jessica Long, you know, not the swimmer, you know, because that's kind of how they first heard about me was, you know, the Paralympic swimmer. Um, so I'm looking forward to them getting to know me without, you know, besides just my swimming. But. Well, unfortunately, no one can stay at the elite swimming level forever. <laughs> um, even though I'm sure you'll probably, if, if you could, if you're a Paralympian, go well, Paralympic champion at 12. I, I can't imagine you'll be a Paralympic champion at 40. But uh, do you have any future career plans? Yeah, um, I right now what I'm looking into is um, I would love to do motivational speaking. Um, so I got it. I want to get my degree in communications, and then maybe do something with mass media and work for ESPN or just. Do something. I, I love the Women's Sports Foundation. You know, I would love to do something um, with one of those places. So, still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and this is, I guess, because you weren't um, an NCAA swimmer. Most, you know, most people probably just don't think about this. But you have you have you attended college classes and everything? I've done um, just classes at a local community college, and that worked out really well with being homeschooled. I was homeschooled my whole life. Um, but right now, I put college on hold um, just with training out here at the training center. And um, when I move back home, that's going to be my main focus. Um, definitely getting school done, um, hopefully right before Rio or right after Rio. So. I think that's a very good plan, very good plan. You've timed it well, you've planned it well, it seems like. <laughs> Thank you. I definitely feel good about it. And, 
you know, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to even do before, and, and it allowed me to really, really focus on my swimming out here at the training center. Well, you got a long way to go in this career, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, Rio is probably just the start. Wherever 2020 happens to be, I'm sure we're going to see you there as well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jessica, thanks so much for joining us. Um, just a congratulations on everything with 2012, not just out of the, in the pool, but out of the pool as well. And we're looking yeah. forward to uh, seeing you at World Championships. I know it, it will be weird to only see you in four events, but uh, I'm sure it will be <laughs> exciting nonetheless. Yes, I'm very excited. All right, thanks again. Thank you, Jeff. Bye. All right, so that was Jessica Long joining us today in the Finis Monitor. As we said, she'll be one of the many swimmers we'll be watching at the IPC World Championships. Be sure to visit SwimmingWorld.com as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages for recaps of the competition. And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.